Okay, Steve Burns here. All right, we, this is going to be our week one um, um, recording. And what I'm going to do is everybody's watching me up here. Make sure he's watching me. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to record everything. So this this video is going to be available uh, for you, um, you know, every week after class. So I need time to kind of, you know, render it out and then put, a, put it up on the server. So I may not be done that, you know. Obviously, not the same night of the class because we get done like 1130 at night. I'm going home to go to bed. So, so probably not to a day or two after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so I'm going to take out your cell. Well, actually, I'm going to have you guys do this right now. Um, once you, I give you this link, this link will be attached automatically to your shared with me link on the left hand side of your Google Google Drive account. All right. So let me um, I'm going to go access. I say I'm at Google Drive now. No, I'm not. I'm going to go over here to my Google Drive here. It was here. There we go. Um, let's go over to Google.com. Just had the darn thing up here. Where did it go? Like me to log into my a different account. And under the drive, I have a folder for the CS G2121. Okay, inside that folder, now this is what I this this is what I I tried to send you guys last week. Okay, so this is the assignment sheet. Um let me zoom in a little bit. On this assignment, see the drive URL is right there. So if you want to take your cell phone and take a picture of that, and what I'd like you to do is to um, is to right now put in this link for this drive so that it will become a link to your Google Drive account. So I'm going to pause the recording here, and so you guys can get set up. Resume recording. All right. So on the video recordings link here, I'm going to put in here week one. And then week one's recording is going to go right there. So you're always going to have it. So all the recordings every week is going to go into that single um, document. So it's really easy for you guys to get to this. Um, I like to use the um, Arial 14 point. Okay. All right. So once I, add, I, I, put, I place it on here, it's done. It's ready to go. Okay. So we go back. So you're going to have access to this Google Drive folder. Um, the CS128. Now, emergency homework is for those who are probably going to be sick, can't get here. You let me know by email that, hey, Mr. Burns, you know, I, I, I put my homework on the drive so that I'm alerted to it. Then I can come to the drive to grab your homework. So which, whatever your homework is, you know, name it, name it the title of the homework and your, and your full name, like the title of homework dash full name. So I know who, who, who it belongs to. OK. On the folder, and then in that folder, put in your homework. Kind of makes it makes it a lot easier uh, for me to kind of keep things track. So this is pretty much easy right here. Assignment number one. Now let me kind of double click that one and open it up. So the intention was for you guys to have some homework, but a lot of you a lot of you didn't check your spam mail. So this is going to be due first thing next Friday. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm going to actually have you guys watch me accomplish this today. Um, I already recorded videos. I could just make you guys go watch the videos, um, but I don't like doing that. So you get to watch me do it and you get the videos already recorded anyway. Um, got additional videos here. So, um, so, so here, I want you guys to kind of get used to the basic navigation and workflow and modeling in Maya. Um, what, we, what I did here is I had you guys model a hammer. So we took a hammer and I had you, I had you guys model, model, we went through the mod, various modeling tools, your extrusion tools, um, your polygon tools actually create your hammer. We're going to do that today um, just so that you have some memory so that when you go back to do this on your own, um, you will have it recorded for you. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have motor skills today because we don't have Maya working. So you have a, you have a, you'll just ask me questions so as, as I go through Maya. Some of these basics, and then after I go through that, um, you've got the recordings to back you up. All right. Um, so 
today, because we don't have Maya opening, let's go over to some of the, the basic you know, Photoshop compositing techniques, which I think is going to be re you're going to really need later on. Um, because when I have you, have you guys start building backgrounds or you know sci-fi backgrounds or or you know you know mountainous backgrounds, you guys will have some familiar familiarity with but familiarity. I can't even talk today with Photoshop. <laughs> So um, I know how many people here are totally brand new with Photoshop. Raise your hands. Good. Then we, we need to go over it. OK, this is going to help you. Um, now, has anybody taken the beginning Photoshop class here? Only two people. That was a long time. But I was here at the college. It's OCC. How about you? Up in Hollywood. OK, I'm going to be teaching the intermediate Photoshop class. Um, next semester, so sign up for that. Um, and I'm going to—I'll be giving you guys some basic Photoshop, some beginning level Photoshop stuff in here. Um, so you know, you know, you can feel comfortable in that class as well. So let's um, let's go have some fun. So do me a huge favor. Let's start with Photoshop, and then what I would want to do is end with Maya, so you have something fresh in your head when you leave class. When in regards to Maya, since we don't have Maya working on our system today, but since I want you, I want you, I need you guys need to have those motor skills, that eye hand connection with with your software, so that this stuff becomes intuitive to you. Let me pause recording, and I'm going to let you guys. Uh... Okay, I want to just bring your attention um, to that document I've given you for the assignment uh, uh, document. On all the assignment documents, oh boy, I gave you the URL. I didn't give you the um, the actual um, images URL. I've I've got a whole bunch of images I'm going to be using for all of my Photoshop classes that are on Google Drive. I'm going to give you that link right now. Okay, so let me. I, I think I've already got it preserved in a in another class. So if I come over here to my 2019 Photoshop, I think it was my Dirt 152-2019. There we go. I'll go to one of those assignment sheets. I should have, there they are, images folder right there. I'm going to edit this, just copy this. My fault. And I'll go back and um, place it inside your folder. I'm going to get back out of here, go to the 121. I'm going to edit that folder. Now, and this, this automatically updates and edits on, on, right, on, right on the drive. So you guys will get it instantly. But you're going to have to refresh your browser once I do it. Okay, place that there. Drop it down. There we go. Images there. Okay, you should have it now. So... Copy and paste that link into your browser, and that's going to give you access to all the images. So if you go to your Google Drive, you'll have access to this folder. You'll need to refresh your browser if you don't see it, any changes. Shift refresh will absolutely refresh your browser. Huh? Cool. All right, so once you click, go to your images, what you're going to do, let's see, this is a table, that's the Maya, that's the homework assignment. Let me go over here to the, um, do a refresh here. Let's see if I, I want to put that here as well, actually, for the video recordings. I'll just do both. Cool. Everybody access the images folder? Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay. So let me go click on it. All right. So these are all my personal images. I organize everything according to categories. 
Um, if you don't have your own images, you're welcome to use some of these, but I'm going to show you some places you can actually go and access images that um, um, that are that are royalty free and free to use. Okay, and one of them is a company called Images.com. Is it Images.com? I think it is. Images.com. I'm going from memory here. Let's grab this. www. See, is it images? Oh, I'm sorry, textures.com. Okay, guys, this is free. High res, low res, medium res, all types of images. Say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm already, there's my username and password. Um, go to images.com now and go on and make a username and password. Um, the, this I find this to be really handy. And they designed this site for, for CG artists who want to use textures for 3D modeling and animation and, and, and as well as uh, texturing in, in 2D programs like Photoshop. So if I come in here and say, for example, I give you guys an assignment that I want you to build some type of a composited skyscraper scene. You can come over here and you can put in skyscraper as your search word, 330, it says it has there. Click on it. Let's give it a hot minute. All right, come on, let's do that again. I'm gonna click on it there. There we go. All right, so here are your various textures as well as full images, full photos and images. If you pay the 10 bucks a month, you get access to the high res images. But the medium res will be fine, low to medium res will be fine for this class. So it's textures.com. And what I'll, I'll tell you what, I will go ahead and put this as a link inside your assignment folder as well. Okay, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and open with the Google here, and I will also include this as a, as a link, as a reminder for textures. Okay. All right, let's go have some fun. So for right now, you will have access to all of these images here. And you're welcome to take these and download them at home on your main system. I, I would just grab the entire folder, the textures folder. Okay, your images folder, I should say. There they are. All right. So let's go into Photoshop. Let's get to understand the interface just a little bit. And let's go and actually start creating some stuff in Photoshop. Okay. Do me a huge favor, everyone. Is in Photoshop, what I like it, I want everybody working, you know, the exact same way. So watch me here. Go to your window menu. Workspot, works, workspace, window, workspace, and make sure Essentials Default is, is set. You should see something similar to what, to what you're seeing now up here. Okay, so when you first load on, load on Photoshop on your system, this is what you're going to see. Okay, and but I'm going to have you guys organize a workspace that I think is going to be most efficient for you. So do me a favor and just kind of watch me right now, and then I'm going to let you guys uh, do it yourself. I'm going to reorganize my workspace. So there are three places you're going to access all your commands in Photoshop, and three places only. One of them is your toolbar. Now, as I randomly click on the toolbar, what do you see happening? 
That's right. Right up here is your options bar or your options panel right up in here. You see that changes. Now, why is that important? That's exactly right. So the way, the way I'm going to talk about Photoshop is from a painter's point of view. Do we apply 100% of the pigments to a canvas when we start to paint? No. Right. We, we, we apply it in washes to build up color, texture, form, and detail. So that's what that options bar is for. Every tool you, cho you cho choose, as he says, um, will allow you to control and customize that tool so that you can control every aspect to create your vision. Right. So the second place you're going to access all your commands and tools in Photoshop are your menus right up here at the top. File, edit. Go ahead and click on one and bring it across. And what you're going to see is, is submenus, which we're going to get into that later on to, to allow you to access deeper commands in Photoshop. That's the second place to access all your commands in Photoshop. So if you click on File once, click and release, and just drag your cursor across, you get to see the submenus inside each of the main menus there. All right, now, the last and final place to access all your commands in Photoshop. It's going to be on the right-hand side are your panels. Now, by default, you see, you see color. You see a swatches tab. These are tabs. Click on it. You get to see the commands underneath each one. Learn. We have layers. We have channels. We have paths. That's it. That's the third and last place you're going to access all your commands in Photoshop. Now, what I like you to do is I like you to organize your workspace so that you have as much real estate available to you as much as possible. The way it's set up now, a lot of those panels is taking up a lot of your space. It gets in the way. So what I'm going to do is this. Right over here in the far left-hand side, we see our toolbar. These are sticky menus, we like to call them. And at the very top of the toolbar, you see that little double arrow there? Click it. It's going to give you a double layered toolbar. I prefer you to work that way. Is everybody watching me? Did you see that up here? Click that double arrow top left hand corner. Now, watch me here. This little dark area to the right of that double arrow, double arrow there, I'm going to click and hold. And I'm going to peel it off and drop it right there. Do that now. That's going to give you the ability to kind of move things around because, again, you're, you're limited on real estate. You may need to move things around. All right. Now, watch me here. I want to remove this entire panel over here off. But right down here in the bottom is my layers, channels, and paths. Those are the three that I would like you guys to be working with together. So what I'm going to do is place my cursor on the far right-hand side in that blank area here, click and hold, and drag it, and place it right in the center. The rest of these, we're going to close out, and it's really easy to do. Watch me. At the very top is this blank little bar here that actually houses the entire group. If I take my mouse, put it on the very top edge of this dark arrow of, of that group, now watch me, not me, the screen. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm going to drag it and drop it, and then I'm going to hit that X to close them all out at one time as a group. Do that now. All right. Everybody got that? Now, um, I'm going to take the group. You look, Watch me up here. I'm going to take the group. This little dark area right at the very top. I'm going to drag it over to the right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to see my layers or more information inside this panel. So I'm going to take my cursor. Is everybody watching me? I'm going to take my cursor. And I'm going to put it in the very bottom right-hand corner. It's going to become a double arrow symbol. Tap down or click and hold and drag it down so it's going to allow me access to more information inside this panel. Do that now. Okay, so this is the workspace I want you to have. So when you go home, you can save this workspace. If I go up to the window menu, why the window menu? 
Remember all those panels that we closed out earlier? Right? They are all listed under the window menu right there. Every single one of them. So if you ever need to go back and get any of those panels or if one closes out accidentally, let's say your layers panels close out accidentally, you want to go back and get it, it's under the window menu, under layers, or libraries, or modify, or paragraph, whatever you need to have. Okay, now, watch me. Windows, Workspace, and, and I want to reset this workspace. I want to save this workspace. I want to make it a new workspace. It's like the number one, two, three, four from the bottom. New workspace, and then call it Steve, Steve's Faves Workspace. And then make sure you also check, check mark all of the boxes, keyboard shortcut, menus, and toolbar. Call it Steve's Faves Workspace. Got it? So once you do it, hit OK. Steve Faves. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just, you know, making up stuff. <laughs> okay, now watch me here. Say, for example, don't forget to click OK. Watch me now. So say, for example, your friends decide to come over to your computer to mess you up, all right? So he comes over and goes, oh, I'll go over here, workspace, and reset essentials default. Boom. And he messed up your workspace. So you figure, oh, you already had him figured out anyway, right? So you come back over, you go to Windows, workspace, Steve's face, workspace, bang, back again. <laughs> Okay, so you can save as many of those workspaces spaces as you like. Um, Photoshop will accept 3D objects. Say, for example, there's certain tools you like to use in, with, with 3D. You can save a, the Steve's 3D favorite workspace or photography favorite workspace or, or drawing and painting favorite workspace. You can save as many of those as you want. So whatever workflow you decide to choose, just choose the workspace and go for it. All right, now let's go play. I'm going to create a brand new file. To do so, I'm going to go to the File menu, New. All right, get to this point. <coughs> file menu, New Document. We're creating a new document. Okay, watch me up here. Should take you no, no more than a second to, do, to, to accomplish that. So, now, new in Photoshop, right? I mean, I can, all these menus are resizable. I can put the mouse in the, I can move this up, put the mouse in the bottom right hand corner, get the double arrow, and I can stretch it and resize it if I want to. So, be aware you have this. So, now in Photoshop, by default, it, it, there's several menus up here. My recent folder is the stuff I've been playing with. You know earlier my saved images um, it's going to bring up anything that I've saved fairly recently I can go to a photo format say for example you want to create a document that's going to sit that's going to create a, a particular format for photography like a 7 by 5 inch or a 6 by 4 4 inch file or a, a, you know you want some special effects like future uh, futuristic Im images masks um, it these these are just presets, okay? So you can you can utilize these presets. You won't need them because I want to show you how to do it on your own. If you want to print something, you got you have presets for print. You want to use a letter format, Lego, Tabloid, A4, right? It, they they set it up for you. Art and illustration, ah, cool. A thousand pixel grid. If you can use it for for the web, um, or two thousand pixel grid poster, um. You you welcome to kind of look through here and see what presets they they've get, given you. If you're a web designer, then you've got some presets for the web, depending on what type of web page you're going to design. If you're designing for the mobile platform, you can go to your your presets for your mobile platform. I recommend or or film and video, right? Oh yeah, Photoshop Photoshop will accept video now, video and 3D. Yes. Um, for the video experience. 
acceptance? Does it only work with NTSC or does it work with PAL too? Oh, that's a good question. I believe, I believe it works with both. Okay. It works with both the European format and the U.S. format. And it does give you the option here to select PAL. Right? Um, okay. Now, I'm going to go back over to Recents. And what we're going to do is I want us I want us to customize the format. We want to do by we want to do our, our, our little tutorial format here. So watch me up here. Not everybody's watching me. All right. So here I want you to put in five by five for the height and the width. Do that now. Five by five. For the resolution, if you're going to be printing something, obviously we're going to be using it for, um, you know, for 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 projection media uh, or 3D or something for the big screen or, or video. Um, but we'll go ahead. I want you guys to put in here 200 pixels, and I'm just trying to keep the the resolution low. By standard, you want 300 pixels per inch. Yes. I know that. I know that. I know. I'm getting there. Just be patient. No, you're not supposed to be at that. I'm getting. I'm getting to that portion. I'm just giving you a hard time. You gotta gotta loosen up. <laughs> gotta have fun. No, I'm getting to this. Drop down this where it says pixel, everybody. All right. So each one of these designations are designed for a particular profession. What profession would utilize the term pixels? Excellent. Web design. Web design. Right? 720, but you know, it's all pixel. The monitor monitor does not doesn't understand print size, only understands pixels. All right. What profession would utilize the designation of Inches. Yeah, photography and print. All right? Pretty, it's pretty, I don't ask trick questions. Centimeters and millimeters. What what profession would use centimeters and millimeters? Probably the same. What profession would use centimeters and millimeters? Who would use that? Excellent. That's exactly right. <laughs> Because, because <laughs> you should have said it, <laughs> right? We're, we're, we're in the new digital age now where a lot of your clients are going to be overseas and they'll pay you through PayPal, right? No, take your half down to do the project, start the project and other half when, they, when you finish a project. It's all being done through PayPal. You're getting paid in U.S. money, but they want to be satisfied through European Design standards, which is your millimeters and centimeters. Okay, points and picas. What what profession would utilize that? What was that? Uh, graphic, design. graphic design, like doing books and, and articles and magazines. Points and pack picas for laying for laying out things and 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 formatting for books or magazines or newspapers. So, okay, we want inches. So I want everybody to tag inches. I told you I was getting to this point. <laughs> and then we have to redesignate the, the width and height as five and five again. All right, so make sure your width and height is five inches by five inches. Now, before we click OK, look over here in the color mode. If we drop it down, what do we see? Somebody shout it out. Things. What was that? No, no. Hey, things. things. What do we see in there? Things have a name. Didn't your mother used to always tell you that? Things have a name. Bitmap, grayscale, RGB, CMYK. These are your color options. What was that? That's a CMYK. Yeah, CMYK, right? In lab. So bitmap. What color variations does bitmap represent? Yes. No. Does not represent RGB. Does that represent 
That does. Or it does represent digital. So what variations in digital, digital would that represent? In fashion. <laughs> You're trying way too hard. <laughs> there are only two possible variations in bitmap. Two and only two. Ones and zeros. A one or a zero. Or on and off. Or black or white. That's it. No shades of gray. No color. Black or white. What profession would use that? Newsprint. Remember, it's half tones. Take a magnifying glass and go close to newsprint. All it is is one, one, it's one color. There's a bunch of dots of one color. That's that's who would utilize this. How about um, um, go back to here? How about grayscale? What would that represent? Black, white, that's right, black and white image. You had two hundred and fifty fifty six shades. 255 shades of gray. 255 shades of gray. I thought there was only one. No. Where, where, where you been going to school? <laughs> <laughs> 255 shades of gray. What was the name of that movie? 50 shades of gray. We get 255. All right. RGB, what does that represent? Red, green, and blue. CMYK, what does that represent? And black. So why do they have K for black? Okay, everybody heard that? Because they don't want to mistake B for blue, right? It's wrong. And trust me, I've heard other instructors tell their students that. You ever go, you ever see like in the movies or I've gone, I've gone to a printing press where they have the the cyan ink, the magenta ink, and the yellow ink, and they have these big metal drums? So what you do is you photograph something that you want to put in full color, and you're going to photograph them onto three plates. One plate's going to represent your cyan, one metal plate's going to, and they're flexible plates, so they, you, can, you can bend them, wrap them around the metal drums, the ink is absorbed into the metal plate, and then it's rolled onto your newspaper. So if you roll them on cyan, and then magenta, and then yellow, it's a full color print. Well, you need black in there to actually add the depth to the to your print. So then it rolls to the black drum. The black drum is your key plate to register all the other colors too. K for key. So now if anybody says B for blue, then you can say, no, it's wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. So what I would like you guys to use you is make sure you select um, RGB. That's what, because we're getting digital. Now, right here, this is important, even for, for 3D. 8-bit. 8 bits of information represents 255, 255. I can't even talk to you. 256 shades of gray. 256 shades of gray. It's from 0 to 255. 0 is a number. 256 shades of gray. Why? How, does, how, how do we derive that number? It's an 8-bit variable. Because 8 is an exponent, 2 to the power of 8. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 is by, to, against itself. 8 times is your 256 possible shades of gray. Photographers love the next one, the 16-bit. Now that gives them even more shades of gray to mess with, right? So that's your 64,000 shades of gray. Now 3D people and, and digital art people love the next one. Remember, it, 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 it guys remember seeing the HDR photography? That is HDR, 2 to the power of 32. That's HDR. So that gives you this extended range of values and lights and colors. That is, that is beautiful for working in, in a 3D program for using images to light your scene. And we'll talk, and I'll show you guys how to do that later on. We're going to work with 8-bit for today to get to know Photoshop. After you're done, after you select 8-bit, hit, oh, hit Create, and it's going to create your document.
Okay. All right. So we have a we have a brand new document. Now let's start learning how to work in layers. And it's good that we that we really are starting in Photoshop because some of the concepts that we're gonna that you're gonna see here, it's gonna be you're gonna see how different it is in the 3D world. All right. So watch me here. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and mask are exactly the same thing. The key to mastering Photoshop is working in is understanding selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. All right. I want to create three new new I want to, I want to create four new layers. On the right hand side under your layers panel, watch me here first and then I'll let you do it. If you're not watching me, I'm going to shout at you. So I have a background layer. This, this is like your base canvas. I want to add four new layers on top of this. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layers panel. You see the garbage can to the right to the far right side. And just to the left of the garbage can is my new layer option, new layer icon. I'm going to click it four times. One, two, three, four. Four. Now you do it. So I noticed that some of you guys have some pretty small looking icons for your layers. You can adjust the size of the icon. If you if you make sure you have enough space open right below your layers panel, watch me. Don't do anything. Watch me first. Have enough space down here at the bottom of the layers panel. Put your cursor right here. Right click and choose large thumbnail. Do that now. Right click and choose large thumbnail. And for the person who just walked in, we're, we're in Photoshop. Okay, so we have larger icons. I can see what I'm doing. Now what I want you to do is I, I want to keep organized some of my layers. So I want you to, to watch me first, everybody. Turn around and watch me. Um, I'm going to rename my layers. I'm going to go to the layer four, put my cursor on layer four, layer four, double click it, and I'm going to call this one red square. I'm going to go to the next one, double click that one, and call this one blue circle. I'm going to go to the next one, double click on it, and I'm going to call that one um, green, green freehand, and the final one I'm going to label yellow straight edge. Yellow straight edge. Rename your layers now. All right, now, how do I know? How do you know which layer you're working in? Highlighted. That's right. You highlight it. All right. Uh -huh. Pay pay attention to what layer you're working in, because I'm, I'm, I'm what's going to happen is you're going to be working in a layer. You go, Stephen, it's not working. Can't see what I'm doing because you're in the wrong layer. All right. So be in the right layer. So I'm going to target on the red square, and we're going to create a selection. If we look at our toolbar, um, this this first set first six set of tools are your selection tools. Up here in the very top right hand corner, you'll notice a little bit of a triangle on the bottom of that icon. That means there are more tools in there. If I click and hold it, I've got a rectangle and the elliptical. That's for my rectangle and circle. So I'm going to grab the rectangle, click and hold and drag it, make a medium sized square to the upper top left corner, get to that point. Just do it very quickly. Don't we? we're, not, we're not creating art here. We're just learning concepts. And guys, don't play. So I see some of you guys are playing. Don't play. Follow me for right now. You got plenty of time to play tonight. All right, so you have your selection. Anybody still working? All right, now, the key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. So what Photoshop is telling you that it would allow you to apply all commands and tools within the borders of the marching ants. 
it will not allow you to apply it outside the merging ends, effectively applying a mask. It's masking it off. All right, now I'm gonna go over here to my let's let's get let's get a better understand better understanding of how and why Photoshop works. Look at your toolbar. Down here at the bottom, you have two color swatches, your foreground and your background. Photoshop will always pull the color from the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I want to tell Photoshop to paint with the foreground color. So I want, I want the foreground color to be red. I'm going to tap and release on the foreground swatch to get the color, the, the, um, the color picker. Do that now. Just click tap and release on your foreground swatch. Now we're going to get a better understanding of how Photoshop is built and how it's functioning. If you look at the color swatch here, I have a combination of luminances or saturation of color. How many shades of gray do we have inside of Photoshop? 256. What's the math for that? Two, that, two to the power of eight. He had it backwards. Well, in reversed. So two to the power of eight. So 256 possible shades of gray. Take your cursor, put it in the top, top up left, upper left-hand corner, and completely drag down vertically, keeping your cursor along the left edge. That is where your 256 possible shades of gray reside. That's where they exist. It's an 8-bit program, 256 possible combinations of anything. Okay, watch me up here again. So I'm going to go to pure white, also called luminance, and drag it horizontally to the, to the right. What's happening? That's, it's getting to a, a pure saturation. I think some of you may, may have red selected. You're getting to a pure saturation of that single color of red. Devoid of luminance, devoid of density, which is your black. So put your cursor in the far upper right hand corner and see your pure color. Okay. Now let's, let's, let's try this out. Top right hand corner, pure color. And slowly drag vertically down. What's happening? It's adding. That's why it's getting darker. Adding the 256 shades of gray to that single color of red until it becomes pure black. Various colors of density added to that red. Is that what you call density? Yeah. Well, from a density or, or adding values, darker values. The artists call them, painters call them values, and photographers call it density. All right, so if you click and drag just randomly through here, you're getting various combinations of luminance, pure saturation, and density, or values, deeper values. Is that making sense? All right, let's understand Photoshop even better. How many shades of gray do we have in Photoshop? 256. All right. Now we're going to prove that's all we have in there. So right down here, you see the RGB numbers? All right. We're going to represent pure black. How many shades of gray do we have in Photoshop? 256. So we're going to put zero. We're going to start at the base of zero. Put zero for red, green, and blue and tell me what you see happening it goes to black that's the blackest you can get in Photoshop okay so now how many shades of gray are there in Photoshop so then what's pure white going to be 256 for everything no that's right 255 count zero as a number so put 255 for red, green, blue. 255, 255, and 255. 
Zero represent, represents no no zero represents devoid of all color. It means absence. Remember ones are zeros. Zero was black and one is pure white. Well, you will you will. So two fifty five is what? So what color what color happens up here? It's white. Pure white, right? So all right, guys. We want whiter than white. We really want to go like like really, really bright white, right? Put in 256. What happens? It's incapable. So Photoshop can only can, can only create or or calculate 256 possible functions or shades of gray. It sees that number and says, oh my gosh, 255 is the edge of the world. There is no 256. That's how you know this is an 8-bit program. Okay, so just keep that in mind because this will come up later on. So what i like you to do is just grab any shade of red and then click OK in the top right-hand corner. Now I want you to, I'm going to go to my paintbrush. Now if you look at my toolbar, it's, it's, it's the fifth. It's, it's the fifth. It's the fifth tool down on the left hand side, or hit the B on your keyboard for the brush. What's the shortcut for making your brush bigger and smaller? Bracket. The bracket. The right hand side of the P key on the keyboard. Bracket to the right makes it bigger. Bracket to the left makes it smaller. So if I paint outside the selection, what happens? Nothing. Nothing, because it's masking off. All areas outside the merging ends. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. Does that make sense? All right. So once we're done, I want you to deselect the selection. You will go to your select menu. Why? Because we're going to modify a selection. The second one down is deselect. What's the shortcut? Control D. Control D. Use it. Once you learn a new shortcut, use it every time or else you will forget. All right. Now, what I like everybody to do is to target the blue circle. Click and hold on your rectangular marquee icon on your toolbar, upper right-hand corner of your toolbar, and target the elliptical tool and make a, an, an elliptical or a circular type shape on the right-hand side. Make sure, again, make sure you're inside the, the blue circle folder. And then I want you to alter your foreground color to blue, any shade of blue. Don't get creative. And then hit the B key for your brush and paint it on in. And notice that now it's being placed on the blue. Yep, you have to use your brush, your mouse. You came in late, so no, no, no pen for you. Um, guys, what I recommend you guys doing is if you buy um, your own welcome pad, bring it with you to class. Then that way it frees up pens for everybody else. Or buy your own pen. You can go buy it's like 69 bucks or something like that. It's pretty expensive. Buy your own pen, keep it in your bag, and bring it to class. Alright, so once I paint it inside the ellipse, what do I how do I get rid of the selection? Control D. Control D, do it. Now go to the green freehand. Go to green freehand layer. What I'm going to do is on a second tool down on the left hand side is your lasso tool. Watch me up here first. Is your lasso tools. Left hand side, second one down, lasso tool. This is your freehand drawing selection tool. Any shape that I want, close it, change the foreground color to green. Hit the B for the brush and paint it in green inside the green layer. Do that now. Don't be creative. Just paint it in there and get it over with. We're going to get to be creative in a little bit. All right. How do you deselect? Yep, do it. Control D, deselect it. 
go to your go to your yellow straight edge layer now and watch me click and hold on your lasso tool is everybody watching me I don't see heads back over here so go to my lasso tool go grab the polygonal lasso tool this is also a free hand but it's a free hand straight edge so change direction change direction with a click click change direction click close it to where I began go to my foreground color grab some yellow B for my brush make sure I'm in a yellow straight edge layer and paint it in there okay now go ahead and go for that I'm gonna hit command D we've learned that we can place each object in their own layer why because it's important to keep it in its own, own separate layer so you can apply all of Photoshop's commands and tools independently from the entire scene so what are layers if I turn off this background this little white background here you see a little checker pattern that means you're working in the standard transparent layer now what are layers before the advent of Photoshop or before digital if you had, say, for example, a photograph that was going to be featured in the front of Time magazine and they need to put airbrush their red border effect as well as their logo on it, as well as, as, well as airbrush their text as, as to what's going to, be, going to be in that particular issue. They can't do this directly in your photograph because it's, it's invaluable to you. So they take a clear sheet of acetate, lay it on top of your, your photograph, airbrush on the border, another sheet of clear sheet of acetate. Lay it on top of your border acetate, airbrush the Time Magazine logo, and then take a third sheet of acetate, lay it on top of that, and then put on the text as to what's going to be featured in that month's issue of the magazine. Then in registration, they photograph it with a camera on the color transparency or slide film, and they make their CMYK color separations from that. It's a lot of process. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot of process. That's why digital has revolutionized the commercial world. It takes away all that process, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. So, like, oh, back. Remember, remember your, your grandparents say we used to walk to school and for miles in the snow. Yeah, we used to do. We used to do like you know, you know masking using tape and, and, and markers on the transparencies <laughs> back in the day. So, anyways, here we go. Now we can place them onto our own layer. We just learned that. How do we move them around? Only one tool does it in Photoshop: the Move tool top left hand corner or hit the V key as in Victor on your keyboard and which layer is going to be moved if I start to move it uh, that's, that's right the rectangular one if I want the blue one to move target the blue if I want the green to move target the green if I want the yellow target the yellow so I want you to overlap them all half on half off very quickly all right Everybody watch, all eyes up here. Stop what you're doing. So I want to place, I want to reposition the layers. Say, for example, I want the, the yellow art on top of the red art. I'm going to click and hold on a layer and watch what happens when I drag it up. You see these little blue lines highlight. See that blue line highlight? Once it highlights, that means that's where it's going to go and you, and you should release your mouse so it can drop there. Is that where I want it to go? No. I want to go up one more and up one more release. So what I want you to do is reposition. I want to put the blue in between the yellow, the, the yellow and the red and release. Now you try it. All right. So now we can move it around. Well, we want to get more creative than that, right? I want to resize it. I want to rotate it. I want to squish it or elongate it. Let's go over here to my yellow straight edge. To transform any of this, edit menu, free transform, or what's the shortcut? Control T. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be using that a lot. So with control, watch me, with control T, I get this little box here. I place my cursor inside the box, I can move it around. If I put it slightly outside the box, see the rotation symbol there, my cursor? Now I can rotate it around. 
if I want to resize it, place my cursor in the corner and it stays constrained automatically. If I don't want to constrain it and I want to squish it, hold the shift key down and I can squish it or make it smaller. Outside again, rotate it and when I'm done, hit enter on the keyboard. Resize every layer. Go for it now. All right, there's another little tool that I love. I'm gonna go to my, my red square and under the edit menu, and instead of free transform, I go to transform and I go to warp. And I get this little grid here. Well, I can warp things around. And you're gonna find some use for this tool from time to time as well. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start learning how to use layers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start you off by allowing you to cut out a sky out of one photograph and replace it with another sky. We'll just start off. And then maybe we'll start putting in buildings behind each other, like make a city, city and skyscraper scene or something. What, not excited about it? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna close out this file. If I come right up here at the top, you notice that this file is, is in, it's in the form of a, of a tab right up here. I can, go, I can go to the file menu close, or I can click the X on the tab, and that'll close it out. It's going to ask me, do I want to save it? I don't. You can if you want. But make sure you guys bring your thumb drives to class or your, or your external drives in the future so you can take any, anything that you do home with you. Or you can save it and drag it onto your Google Drive. But... Um, but don't do it that way. Bring your thumb drive or external drives. All right, I'm going to say no. I'm going to close this out. So let's actually go get something. Now, you guys have the access. You have all the files that you need that I'm going to be using for class on the Google Drive that I gave you. So watch me first, and then, then I'll let you know which, which drive to go get. Um, I'm going to go to the bridge. File menu. No, don't do it. Watch me first. File menu, browse and bridge. All right, and and what bridge is is a tool to allow you to preview all your images before you open them in Photoshop. Um, over in my favorites, I made a shortcut for student work files. It's the same ones you're using online. And let's see, I believe I've got one called compositing in here, if I remember correctly. All right, let me click this. Okay, those could work quite nicely. All right. Um, there is another two, I think. Let me, let me, let me, let me go to one more folder just to double check. Uh, that one works fine, but uh, I think it's one called LEB. Yeah, I think that, that can be quite nice. All right. Um, let's start with, we're going to start with compositing folder. I'm going to go into the compositing folder and I'm going to access this first one is called uh, demo number two. Don't get it yet. Just just watch me for now. I'll let you guys do it after 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 I'm done showing you the demo. And um, I'm going to grab one more, and I think I'll have you work with this one first. I think it's under architecture. All right. So under architecture. There should be an interior shot here. So I can target the image by clicking on it. And I think I have another version of it right here. This is what I want. I want the architecture number 17. If I hit the space bar on my on my key on my keyboard, that will maximize the image. If I click once on the image, it'll zoom in. If I click and hold, it'll allow me to scrub the image and to kind of get a, a closer view um, of, of the information that I have there. If I hit the tap again, it goes back to full frame mode. Okay, so space bar again goes back to grid. Space bar is a toggle. Space bar zooms in or goes back to grid. This is the one I'm going to use for now. Okay, so I'm going to double click it or hit enter on the keyboard and that'll automatically open up in Photoshop. I want to take both of these files and put them side by side to next to each other. So I'm going to come over here and go to Window, Arrange, Tile Vertically. 
it'll put them side by side. I'm going to take the toolbar and put it in the middle. And I mean the, the layers panel and place it in the middle. The first thing that we do in Photoshop is we decide what's going to be the background layer. I'm going to choose that this image here is going to be the background layer. Therefore, I'm going to duplicate that layer so I don't screw it up. If I do screw it up, I can I can delete the, the duplicated layer and go back and reduplicate again. So anybody remember the shortcut for duplicating a layer? That's why I can drag and drop it on top of the new layer icon or the shortcut is command or control J. Boom. Use your shortcuts. It's faster. Yes. Well, too late. We're on this right now. We'll discuss it in the middle of the class. Thank you. So, um, so I got to go over Photoshop anyway. So just watch Photoshop. All right. Now, on this image, yes. Uh, is it recording or can I record? I'm recording already. You don't have to record, so I'm doing it for you. All right. So what I like to do is I want to make some adjustments to this image. So if I click on the architecture in the background, if I hit the F key, there are three different viewing modes in Photoshop. Hit the F key, it goes to full frame mode. F key again goes to full frame mode with black. Don't work in this. And don't work in the standard view. I prefer the second view so that um, you, you have all your tools there and you're using more of a medium gray background rather than, rather than the black background. The black background makes your fools your eye into believing that there's more color and saturation there than it really is. You, work, you want to work with more of a neutral color so that your, so your color assessment is accurate, much more accurate than working in black. So this image here is a little dark. So I want to use a tool that's going to allow me to actually make tonal adjustments to the image to brighten it up or to darken it down or to, or to add contrast. I'm going to use what's called levels. Levels is going to give you a histogram, which you all should be familiar with from, from the use of our, our digital cameras. So if I go to image menu, adjustments, why? Because we're going to make a tonal or color adjustment to an image. Image, adjustment, levels. The second one down. What's the shortcut? Control L. Select it. And guess what we have here? We have our we have our histogram. So look right down here at the bottom. These are your 256 shades of gray. If I want to know how much this particular shade of gray exists in this image, I bring my cursor up. The higher the mound, the more of that gray exists in this image. If that's true, do we have much whites in this image? No. Here are my whites here. It's very little whites in this image. How about blacks? Well, this uh, the, the stronger blacks is very small. But there's a lot of darker, it's a darker mid-tone. You can tell it's very, very dark mid-tone. So what we're going to do is this. If I take the middle slider and bring it to the left, that takes out the mid-tone. That represents your medium gray. Shadows, medium gray, highlight. If I want the highlight to be starker, bring the highlight slider to the base of the curve as contrast. Bring it to the base of the curve. If I mid-tone, a little less mid-tone, if I want it richer in the shadow areas, that will start to increase contrast. Is that making sense? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want you guys to get to this point. So go on to your Google Drive, and I believe I got this. I I, I retrieved this image from the the architecture folder, and this one was called. I forget what it was called. Let me kind of cancel this out real quick. Um, this was called um, architecture number seventeen. And then the other one, and then just open up any other image in that file that you like, along with that one. doesn't matter what the image is. Okay, let's go back into Photoshop. Now, I'm going to go back and let's go ahead and F key for full frame. Command or Control L for levels. 
bring brighten it up a little bit add a little brightness here add a little bit of density for the shadows and give it a little mid tone. okay that looks good there I'm just I'm not looking for perfection I'm just kind of like brighten it up a little bit now what I want to do is all eyes up here I want to take one of those images I want to place it on the table and I want that image to match the perspective of that table okay so the reason that's the reason that you go to windows arrange tile vertically because we need the move tool now what's the shortcut for the move tool what's the shortcut for the move tool the V key it's in Victor so once I have the v, v key activated, I'm going to grab the image that's next to it, make sure that the tab is activated and highlighted, drag it on over, and release. Say, don't ask me again. All right. And what did it do? It placed it on its own layer. Now, I'm going to, do I need this one anymore? All right. So I'm going to close it out. So I want this to lay down on the table. So what do I need to do? Talk, well, well, yeah, but walk me through it. What's the short for? What's the shortcut for resizing? That's right, Control T. So make Command or Control T. Bring it down. I'm going to match the size of the table. Now, once I get it down, now this is important. Once I get it down to the size of the table, Command or Control Plus zooms in so it makes life easy on me space bar by itself no matter what tool you're in will allow you to move the tool so if i release the space bar it goes back to the move tool if i hold down the space bar it gives me the hand tool to move the image around to, um, so i can navigate easier now just to make this easy on me i'm going to bring down the opacity of that file of this image of the mountain image Go to my opacity options in the top right corner here. Click and hold and bring the slider to the left so that I can see through it a little bit. It's going to help me. I'm going to match it up to that table. So is resizing me, helping me much here? I mean, how am I, are these, are, is this table here a right, right, right angle, a 90 degree right angles? No. That's what you need to slant it, right? All right. So this is what we're going to do. Bring it up. All right, watch. Edit menu, not free transform, but transform, distort. Distort. Click it, and what I can do, I can grab these and make them independent. One, two, three. Four. And it hit enter. And I can bring up the opacity on my layer again. Right here in my layers panel. Opacity is 51%. Bring it up to 100. Okay. So if I hit command and control zero, it looks like the photograph is just sitting back there on the table. So what I would like you to do is grab one, two, three. I want you to fill up one, two, three, four tables back here with, with, with four different images. Okay. All right. So let's do another tutorial here. Let's practice on selections like I promised. I'm going to hit Command or Control W, which is close in Photoshop. Command or Control W. No, I don't want to save it. So I'm going to go over inside the same folder, the architecture folder. There is this image here, or I think what I will do, let's take a look at, nah, that was kind of far away. I could use that one easily, but let's use, let's use this one here. It's called masking number nine. It's in the architecture folder. So don't do it. Just watch me first, then I'm going to let you do it. So this is a shot I took where? Las Vegas. That's right, in Las Vegas. Hit the F key for full screen mode. Command plus zooms in. Command minus zooms out. Space bar, hold it down, allows me to pan it around. 
and I want to replace this sky. So what's the sh what's the shortcut for duplicating a layer layer in Photoshop? Control, Control or Command J. Now I'm gonna turn off the eyeball on the bottom. What happens when you turn off the eyeball on these is that they go away. They're still there. So turn on the eyeball again. Click the eyeball where where, where it once was it and it toggles on and off. So what I would like to do now is actually select this sky and replace it with another one. And I'm going to use it with some of my selection tools. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. I'm going to come over here to the my toolbar. Second one down. I hear clicking. The second one down on the right-hand side, if I click it, is your magic wand or quick selection tool. I'm going to target the magic wand. By default, contiguous is going to be turned on, and that's good in this case. And the goal here is to target all the sky and then cut it out. If I click and release on the blue sky, it selects it all. Why? Because what it is doing, what it's doing is it is targeting um, similar colors or luminances or tones, and it will and it will use 32 as an average. Since this is a pretty solid blue in there, it targeted it pretty well. Once it's done, once it's done selecting the blue, what, what do I do? Delete. Hit delete on the keyboard. And my sky is out. How do I get the, the, the how, to turn, how do I turn off the marching ants? Control, command or control D. There it is. Now let's go get another sky. The shortcut to toggle between bridge and Photoshop is Command or, con or Control, Shift, O. And you do it again, it toggles back to Photoshop. Command or Control, Shift, held down together, and hit O. So now I'm going to go to another folder called Clouds. And I'm going to grab some clouds. Let's see what clouds would you guys like to have. Maybe one of those. We'll grab one of those. Double click it to open it up. How do I tile them next to each other? Window. Window. That's right. Windows arrange tile vertically. How do not what what tool do I need now to move it over? Control v. That's right. Not control V, just V. Just V. Hit the V. Click and hold, drag it on top of the other one. Do I need this one anymore? No. What do I do? Close it, Close it out. Hit the F key to go to full screen mode. Okay. Now let's look at a layer positioning. There's my clouds. Where are my clouds sitting? Where do I want them? Click and hold. Get the blue line. Release it. Now you guys get to that point. Okay, let's practice our selections uh, a little bit more. Um, that particular one anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this one called Flintstones on Tiff. That's in the clouds folder, by the way. And if it opens it up in Adobe Camera Raw, just simply hit open image. Okay, so I'm gonna want to target this sky. Now, if I go to my magic wand, it'll target it has the option to be contiguous, which means it, it stops at neighboring pixels. So it's it it, 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 select, it selected as much of the blue as it could, and it stopped at a neighboring pixel or differentiating pixel or color. See where it starts to fade off and stop here? Based on the tolerance. I can increase the tolerance or I can do something else. I'm going to hit Command or Control D as deselect. Turn off contiguous. Now it's going to select that blue everywhere in the image. Boom. Everywhere in the image. Shift select will add to it, and it selects it everywhere. Now, what you're looking at here is it targeted the background pretty well, but it also selected some of the blue that's up in this billboard. And it also selected some of the blue that's in this tie. So I'm going to show you a quick way to edit this. What I'd like you to do 
is to use quick masks. If I hit the Q key on the keyboard, and by default, let me actually let me set it up to default color. By default, quick mask is going to be red. Okay. Like this. Anywhere that's clear means it's selected. Anywhere that's red means it's not selected. Okay. If I hit the Q key again, you'll see that there's some pixels in here that have been selected, the blue, which I don't want to be selected. So if I hit the Q key, I'm going to hit the B for brush. There's my brush size. And if you paint with black, it adds to your mask. In other words, if I come right down here and paint with black, it adds to the red where you're masking. If I hit Q key again, it goes back to your standard selection mode. All right, the key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. You have to have a selection. So if I go back to Q, which is quick mask, quick mask is a temporary masking mode to allow you to use your paintbrush to paint in your selections. So if I hit the X key, which is a shortcut for switching my foreground and background color, if I switch to white, white takes it away. If I hit the Q key again, see what it did? Okay, so it takes it away. If I make the brush bigger, it's faster. So now I'm going to come right over here, go to his tie, because his tie was selected too, and I'm going to paint with what color? White. Black. I'm going to make sure I'm paint with black. Some of these areas were selected that shouldn't be selected. So paint black will mask off. Hit the Q key, the marching ants. Oh, I got one little bit there. Paint that here and hit the Q key. Now they're gone. If I come back over into here, this looks good. That looks good. All right, look at the rope. We kept the rope and everything. So now I have exactly what I wanted. I'm going to click and hold and drag this on top of the icon to the left of the garbage can. That duplicates a layer. Command zero pops it to full view. I'm going to turn off the bottom one. What do I do to get rid of the sky? Delete. Delete. All right, sky be gone. So then now all I need to do is go get some another cloud. So let's just get this one here. Double click it. And windows, arrange, tile vertically. Hit the V key, grab the clouds, bring it on over. I don't need this one anymore, by the way. Let's close it out. I'm going to close this one out here. Bring the clouds right underneath it. And then Command or Control L for levels to give us some richness in those areas back there. Maybe some brightness in the lights. Just kind of get you used to working with that. Okay, give that one a try. All right, let's do something practical. So this is something you're definitely going to apply to maybe some of your gaming assets or maybe you want to create a and a piece where um, your background is going to be a composite from Photoshop and your foreground is going to be a 3D object or maybe 3D buildings. So you want to kind of get your background populated with some visual interest going on here. So I'm going to utilize my images from textures.com and I think I'm going to want this buildings on the right hand side to be my main subject and I want the buildings to the left hand side to be my background subjects. So I'm going to go ahead and target each one, target this one, click on it, and I'm going to download it. I've already logged into my account, and um, I'm going to download the medium size one. It just is downloaded. Now, I, the browser is asking me where to download. So if your browser doesn't ask you where to download to, you can go into the preferences in your browser to tell it to, add, to, to, to ask you where to download rather than the browser just downloading to your downloads file. Um, so I'm going to go over to here, and I have all my photos, which is just like yours. I'm going to my desktop, and then go over here to the student work files folder. And I'm going to put this inside my architecture folder. Okay, textures.com, and I'm going to, oop, I hit cancel. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, there we go. So student work files, 
I'm going to go ahead and place this inside my textures folder real quick. Okay, done. Now I'm going to go back and grab the other. So this is going to be my, the, my the <laughs> subject I'm interested in being in the foreground. I'm going to go to a medium size as well. Now it limits you on how many you can download per day. Once you make, once you uh, hit your limit, it won't allow you to download unless you actually pay for it or you wait to the next day. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm gonna go to Bridge. Let's go find my files under my student work files. I placed them where in the textures folder, right? Did I put them in the textures folder or did I put them into the? Yeah, I sure did. I was dumb. I'm supposed to go into architecture. Doesn't matter. So I'm gonna scroll down and go find them. Let me see if they're at the bottom, by the way. It should be at the top. What was that? It should be. Question is, was it alphabetical? I'm gonna scroll down here. We have so much stuff in the textures. It's easy to miss it. It's under textures.com. I think all of these are from textures.com, so it's gotta be coming up here pretty soon. There it is. Okay. All right, so there's one there. And let me go see if I can find the other. All right, I think I put the other in architecture. I'm going to open this one up. There's one, and I'm going to go into architecture folder. I believe I put it into there. Student work file. Architecture. Let's see if it's in here. I did not put it in there. All right, fine. I'll go download it again. Let's go back. Target this one. Save it. Student work files, architecture. Textures.com there. So I'm going to go back in the bridge. There it is. Open it up. All right. So let's work on the first one. Close this file out. Don't need it. And what I would like to do is, is, is to remove that sky. So right now it's pretty bland since I want this to be the foreground object. So I'm going to add some contrast to it. What's the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do in Photoshop? Duplicate the layer. Command and Control J. Then, what's the shortcut for levels? Control L. Yeah, Command or Control L. And you can see here I have no blacks, no low tones to give it some contrast. So I'm going to take the, the black slider and bring it to the base. See that there? All right, nice. Bring up the mid-tone a little bit. Maybe bring in a little brightness like so, and that's good. Now I want to select the sky and cut it out. I don't want the sky in the way. I want, I want to overlap some architectural elements. So I'm going to come over to, I'll do the magic wand, target this, and because contiguous is turned off, just, just take note of this, it selected the sky everywhere, that white color everywhere. If I get in closer, you can see that it, it, it missed some of these areas down here. Okay. So I'm going to want to target this. So hold the shift key to add to it there. And as you can see, it, it went ahead and targeted some other areas that I don't necessarily want it to target. Okay. So that let it finish thinking. Sometimes it freezes up on me. There we go. All right. So it targeted a few areas I didn't want it to target. So I'm going to hit the Q key on the keyboard. 
just to help me resolve this issue very quickly. So it targeted more information than I wanted to. I'm going to hit Command Z to go back. There it is. That's what I wanted. Now, I'm going to hit the, the Q key for Quick Mask. All right. So you can see immediately what should be red and what should be what should be clear. I'm just going to, I'm going to double click this top top area of my um, my panel here and I'll, that'll minimize it. If I double click back up there again, it will come back. So I'm going to double click minimize. So I'm going to utilize my paintbrush tool. So my B key. Now what I could do is I can continue to use my selection tool since it's a big rectangular area. Select it all and fill it with what color? Black. That's right, with black. Edit menu. Fill. Fill with what color? Black. It also gives you foreground or background, or you get to choose a color, black or gray. You want black here. There. Now, if I get in close to the others, I can, again, use the paintbrush once again. I'm going to hit Command D. Hit the B key for the brush. And I'm going to, you know, pull that down a little bit. Paint with black. See? Just very quickly make sure that all these buildings are going to be masked off. Now, if you don't want to use the paintbrush itself, you can always go back and use that polygonal lasso tool, right? So I'm going to apply it right in here. Is a this is kind of a straight line, straight edge architectural piece. And I'm going to fill that with black. So Alt Backspace is filled with the foreground color. Alt or Option Backspace or Delete. Or Command or Control Backspace is filled with the background color, which is red there. All right. So again, I can go to my Polygonal Lasso tool, straight down, straight down, come all the way across, close it, fill with black, foreground color in this case. Here's these areas right in here. Let's go ahead and zoom in close. And I can use my polygonal lasso tool. I mean, I could use my paintbrush as well, right? Come all the way down. Grab all these guys here all the way around. We're going to try to do all this in one fell swoop. Uh, close, but here. And they need to come back and take this out here. Right in between here. We want to keep the sky or delete the sky. Command or control backspace fill with the foreground color, which is white. So I'm going to go inspect this very quickly. And then I, I've got the option to use the brush. I mean, I can still just use that. Yeah. Uh, when you're in this mode and you're using the brush, I noticed it auto selects a soft edge. Can um, it to a hard edge? Yes, you can. If you hit this little fourth box, go to your options bar, fourth icon from the left hand side here, go to your brush tip shape, softness, hardness, actually, let me make it bigger. Hardness slider, harder edge, softer edge, harder edge, softer edge. However, the shortcut is if you're on the PC, Alt, right click, drag left to right, resize your brush, down hard, up soft. Remember that the first day of class? Okay. All right, I'm going to come in here and just finish this up very quickly. I'm going to give it a harder edge brush since the architectural edge is fairly, fairly hard. There we are. Okay, that's done. Command and control zero pops into full view. Now, 
What do we need to make this happen? Merging ants. How do we get them back? That's right. Q key. There they are. The sky is there. Let's go get our layers. Double click on our layers panel here. Bring it back. And let's delete the sky out. Done. The one on the bottom is still on. So turn it off. Okay. So let's go get a different set of clouds. Um, let's go to my clouds folder. And you guys have all these files too, but I want you to use your own. Let's see if I got something in here I think will work really well. I'm thinking probably let's do this one here. Double click it, open it up. Now, I have a tendency to kind of drag the um, icon, not icon, but the tab off, hit the V key, drag it on over, and then once I'm done, I just close this one out. Okay. These clouds are huge. So Command 0 pops it all the full view. Now, if I go to Command T, get it selected, it's selected, but you can't see it because the borders are way out here. The photograph we draw dragged in is, is, is way bigger than the file we're working in. So Command Control Zero pops it all in. So now I can take my clouds and bring them down smaller. There we go. And clouds have no definite um, form. So Shift key, I can distort it. Hit Enter, Command Zero to full view. All right, now. The clouds in the back are very blue, but the water in the skyscraper is very red. So with the clouds targeted, I'm going to go over to Image, Adjustment, Color Balance. Red, green, and blue, and their opposites, yellow, magenta, and, and yellow, magenta, cyan, magenta, cyan, yellow, magenta. I can adjust these colors in the shadows, midtones, and highlights independently. So I'm going to add a little bit. If you look at this image on here, it's a little more orangish, a little yellowish orangish. Let's add a little yellow to that. So it looks like it's all part of the same scene. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. There we go. How does that look? Does that balance it out a little bit better? <laughs> now let's go bring in our other architecture. So here it is. What I want to do is I want this architecture without that sky. I don't want the sky in the way. So magic wand should do the trick. And because all I want is a sky and nothing in between, I'm going to turn on contiguous. The sky seems to be a fairly solid white. If I click it, boom, done. I want the architecture, not the sky. Select inverse or shift control I. It inverses selection, windows, arrange, tile vertically, V for the move tool, drag this on over to here. I'm going to let you guys do this in a little bit. Now we got a, a whole nother set. Now these buildings are way too big, right? And we definitely don't want the water, which is just, it's no big deal. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to Command T, free transform, and just make it a lot smaller like this and place them way back here in the background. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is thinking about how things work in the real world, see before and after, before and after, things that go further back in the background, what happens to it? it that's right, it, it gets hazy. Not out of focus, it can if you're using a shallow, if you're using lenses, but what happens is, is that the, at, the atmospheric haze starts to build up. So it takes on the color of your background, it takes on the color of the haze, and it desaturates at the same time. So you lose your color in favor of the color of the haze. 
Now the haze back here is going to be more of this warm, warm white type of effect. So what I'm going to do is this. On the right hand side of your layers panel, if I double click it, you get these, well, Photoshop stops acting up here. You're going to get these old layer effects. Okay. All right. So when I double clicked on this blank area on the right hand side of the layer, it brought up what's called the layer styles box. This adds special effects to anything that's, that's inside that layer. One of the effects I want you guys to pay attention to for this one is your overlay effect. So color overlay. You don't want to check the box. You want to click on the word over color overlay. And what happens is the color shows here. It'll cover it up with that color. So obviously it's the wrong color. But if I click on the color swatch box, I get my color picker. If I bring the cursor over to the left, this is my color picker, which I can select anywhere on my image. So if I want the haze to be this color in the background, see, boom. Now that takes on the color of the haze. And we're faking it because that's what haze does. It basically lowers your contrast and dominates your image based on the haze in the background. So I'm going to click OK. And you're going to notice an effects option here on the bottom of that layer. I can turn off the effects by clicking the eyeball on it so you can get it without the effect. Turn the eyeball back on, you have the effect. So if I want... <coughs> more of these buildings I simply duplicate the layer what's the shortcut control command or control J and let's say I'll pull some back over here this time and I think now this is just to save time by the way in reality you're going to use different buildings Im images of building in different layers maybe these buildings back here will be taller Like this. Maybe these will be a lot taller. Maybe these will be a lot skinnier. So I'll hold the shift key and do something like this. It starts to change the shape a little bit. Okay. And if I want some of these buildings to go way back there in the background, then they're really going to take on that color. Then let's say I'm going to duplicate this one, Command J. And I'm, what I should do is save this file while I'm at it. So now I've got, I should have two of these. Now that's one. I'm going to do one more. Now here's a, here's, here's a trick. With the, with the Move tool activated, if I hold down the Alt or Option key, that allows me to duplicate the, the, the layer automatically. And if I want these buildings, let's say to be way, way in the back, I'm going to distort those a little bit too. I want those to go way in back there in the background. Let's see. We're going to go back to our layers panel. Notice here's my duplicated background. And turn the overlay on and off so you can see which one I'm affecting. Go to overlay. Double click it. And let's see if I, if I go even further back. Maybe this will take on, I'm just hitting the color swatch up there. Maybe that'll take on a little bit of a different color back there. Maybe something in between, like so. And then bring up the opacity. And I think I'm going to even bring down the opacity on a layer. Just a little bit. Just bring, bring the, look at, make it look like there's some haze in the front there. I think you guys are getting the point. Um, so you can see I've used multiple layers to create something very, very dynamic. If I don't like it, like this background one, I can always come back, double click on the color overlay again, and I can click on the color swatch and say, okay, I can sample from any of these layers there. Like that. That might work a little better. <laughs> so 
Okay, pretty cool, huh? Um, so now this is something I can use as a composite, and I can even bring this stuff into After Effects so that each layer is identified, and we can bring 3D objects to interact with the layers. All right, and all we did is we were using standard you know, layering techniques, select it, put it in its own layer, and then we created one architecture for one of the images, and we simply re reshaped it with free transform and brought down and added a, um, a, a layer of effects to it. Remember, on the right-hand side of the layer, on the empty section, just double-click, and that will bring up the layer effects stylized, stylized box. You guys want to get to that point? <laughs> One of the premier programs for 3D animation and modeling. Maya. Okay. And we did a little bit of um, um, you know, workflow the last time we were in class. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit will be a, a review. But um, um, let me, I want to share with you the homework first. And then we're going to go over. Um, we're going to go over how, how to create in Maya. We're going to create a hammer today in Maya. So we're going to kind of learn how to do the basics of 3D modeling, um, navigation, the, you know, the building things in Maya. So what you're going to create as a result of um, your experience with this particular assignment, uh, tutorial today is you're going to build a, um, a table setup in Maya. So here, uh, I want you to find five household objects and model them in Maya. Each one will receive two points if created correctly. So there's five criteria. Create a household object using the Revolve tool. Creating a chair using the Extrude tool. Create four plates using uh, modeling tools of your choice. Create four forks using modeling tools of your choice. Organize all objects so that they are setting so that you are setting up the table to feed a group of four. For example, organize the chairs, plates, forks, and knives in such a way that you are about to serve your guests. All right, so that's that's basically it. Um, let's actually kind of go in and explore a couple of those tools and. Um, Let's get into Maya. All right, now I'm going to do a little bit of a refresh. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I didn't see a hand up. Well, I will be impressed if you did four different model versions. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. So the question is, can I just do one and just copy them? You're going to be doing that anyway, even with like the table. If you do table legs that are just a complete, completely different design, you're going to get four of the same thing anyway. Um, copy and modify. Mm -hmm. Copy and modify. Yeah, copy. Yeah, just copy and modify. Yeah. You can do that with the plates and forks as well, because you're going to have the same fork style, right? So not 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 each plate is going to have a different fork style. So yes, you can duplicate your plate. Um, when you, when you, the more you work in Maya, the faster you're going to get. So those questions aren't going to be a problem to you anymore. You're going to learn how to quickly whip these things on out pretty fast. So, um, all right. So I'm working in the Maya Classic here, and I want to actually, you know, bring down an object. I want to kind of, kind of get you guys used to the. The basic navigation kind of just redo what we rehash over what we did in the first class. Um, up here are my, my my various shelves, and I want the modeling shelves. And we're gonna start we're gonna start with it with with the box. So just a quick review. I can click on the box, or another way of accessing any of your modeling tools is if you hold the shift key down and right click, and you can you can actually access them this way as well. All right. So if you have no, if you have, if you have no um, um, shift, no modifier, a right click is you get to select the various uh, um, aspects of your model. 
whether it's a, your vertex of your model, the face of your model, uh, the UV maps, or, the, or, or, or you want to be working in object mode. Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of this model here. Now, you can view your various uh, 3D attributes in your file. This button very down here in the bottom, bottom left, right above the M for Maya. Click it, and that's going to open up the assets that exist in your file. Your camera, your various cameras. Here's my sphere. Here's my default lights. So if I target the sphere and I want to get rid of the sphere, I'm gonna hit A just to fit. Um, I'm gonna hit hit A to fit the view. But if I target sphere and I want to delete the sphere, I can hit delete on the keyboard. Now it just make it go away. So to grab another object, shift, right click. I'm gonna go to the cube and hit the A key to get that to fit the view. Okay. If I want to mess with the attributes of the cube by giving it different subdivision levels, I can come right down here to the bottom right, click on the attributes editor, and if I go over to the um, polycube one tab that is associated with the attributes editor, I have my subdivision areas within that cube. It's width, it's height, and it's depth. And I can divide it up in however many ways that I that I feel I need need to need to choose. I'm going to do just two for each of each of these. Um, remember, Alt left click is rotate. Alt right click is zoom in and out. Moving the mouse up and down. And Alt middle click is drag left to right. So I'm using the Wacom pen. So I'm going to come over and find, go to Wacom, go to my Wacom properties there. And in the Wacom properties, or if you're using a stylus of a different style, I want my top button to be set for a, a middle click. In my 3D program, Maya is not listed here. Okay, so I need to go get it under the application. We're going to use, use my Wacom properties. Hit the plus symbol, and I'm going to go find Maya. It's going to be open. There it is. If it's open, the Wacom properties is going to see it. If I click OK, now Maya is targeted. This is the program I'm going to give these attributes to. Now, don't 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 play. Watch me. Um, if you're using a, um, chances are you got you guys can be using a mouse at home, so you want uh, you know you don't have a, a pen, then you, you have to set it up this way. So or a stylus. So here's my button. That's from right click. This is this one here is going to be my my right click on the bottom. I want to make that top one my middle click. So I'm going to go right here, clicks. After I make, again, just keep me reminded, I have Maya selected, click. I want middle click for that top one. So right click here, middle click up in here. If I go back to here, hold down the Alt key, hold down the, the, my, my top button. Now I've got my pan. Because it's set for middle click. And it will stay that way until you physically go in and move it. So my rotate, my zoom in and out works, and then my pan all works. What was that? The middle button is alt. Middle button is your drag. X and Y axis. You can have the... Oh, as well, so you guys want to try that on your machine with uh, with your, your brush? Um, alt. Oh, wait a minute. Well, no. Well, you know, that's a good question. The question is, couldn't you also set the alt for the for the button on the pin as well? Yeah, I can. So if I go back to my properties and back in Maya again, watch me here. I've got the middle click. Let's see. I should go. I should have a click. All right. If I want to use the Alt, I'm going to have to go to my keyboard shortcuts. 
modifier. And if I need modifiers to be associated with my clicks, I have to go to modifiers instead of just the clicks. I'm going to go to my alt right click. Right alt right click. All right, come over to here and I'm going to grab it, hold the top button down. It's not working. It is not working. Now if I hold down Alt here and drag, not working. Oh, you know why it's not working? Duh, I'm sorry. I totally was not paying attention. You guys didn't catch me. You didn't catch me. What did I do? What's that say? What it should it be? Middle click. Modifier. Alt. Middle click. You weren't watching me. So click OK. And right, now I'm going to go back and try it. There it is. See, I don't have to use a modifier now. Good idea. Good thinking. OK. So now I can just hold down the top button and drag it this way. Um, yeah, with the other ones, it's going to have to be, let's see, the bottom ones are alt. You don't want the alt um, left click to be applied to the bottom. The reason being is that you're going to need that bottom button as a, as a raw right click for other aspects in your 3D program. So you don't want to mess with that. So you have to use two fingers for that one. But for the top one, that's really handy. That's real handy. Okay, now just remember we can we can select our faces, our edges, and our points, right? Yeah. So if I hold down Alt, right click, not Alt right click, but right click. Let's kind of get out of here real quick. Let's kind of zoom this back. All right, so right click. There we go. Um, I can select my 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 vertex, my edges, or my face. You can just use this little dial selection here. I think it's what they call it. I forget. If I want to go to faces. Now, I, if I highlight or, or or hover my cursor over the face of my objects, that face is going to be selected. If I click on it, now it's targeted. Now I can modify that face. Well, say I want to move it, right? I can use on the, on the left hand side, I have my move tool. If I click it, you see my 3D widget come up. And I can just move that face in any, any direction that I want an X, Y, or Z axis. Um, so if I come over to this face and click on it, I can do the same here. Okay? Or we can use shortcuts on the keyboard. Now this is what's going to really help you. Q takes you to the object selection tool. W is your is your move transform tool or translate tool. E is your rotate tool. R is your uh, allows you to resize. Now, this is how it works. Look at the order that these in, right? Look at the order. Q. All right. Q is skip the selection ones. W, E, R. Look at look at the position on your keyboard. They're right next to each other. Q W E R. And it's going from top down to the bottom, left to the right. Does that make sense? Try it. You guys try it. Just play with. It. So we want to modify our shapes now. We want to add more geometry to the shapes. So remember, we we're, we get we're in component mode now. Component means I can come in here. Yeah, you guys are talking back there. He's not even watching. Yeah, turn around and watch me. All right, so component modes. 
means I can come in here and select the individual components of this object, your edges, um, you know, the surfaces. So component is F8 on your keyboard. So if I hit it, I got component selection is now on, or I hit it again. Now the object selection is all on. Object selection means that you select the entire object. Okay, so if I hit the W key, now my my um, my local rotation point or your widget is actually placed at the, in the center of uh, as as your as your um, the local rotation point. The zero zero coordinate here is called your world rotation coordinate or your center point there. And this is your local. Now, if I want the individual components, I hit the F8 key again. Or it's going to be these two buttons right there, right there, right up here. You can see it right up there. That's your that's your component or your object selection mode or F8, F8 function key eight. It's your toggle between those two modes. So if I go to the component mode, and then, now I'm going to right click and decide, okay, do I want the face or do I want a vertex where I can actually select the individual points. If I target the points, and I can move those individual points up or down and so forth. Okay. If I uh, right click and hold again, let's say let's go grab a um, an edge, which is right above here. Now I can target the individual edges. So I can select this edge here, move it around, move it out, you know, whatever I want to do. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's add some more geometry to this. This, this. this is the part I always enjoy, the extrusion stuff. So I want to grab a face, okay? Right click, go grab my face, and let's target this face right there. If I want to extrude a shape out of here, I'm going to hold the shift key. But keep in mind that we have these symbols here. They're planar symbols. And say I want this to bevel in along this, panel, this plane. See that plane there? Hold the shift key down. See extrude. Remember you guys had 2017 last time and it didn't have this ability? You have 2019 now. Now you do. So hit the plane. Just hold the shift key down. Tap the plane and drag to the... Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, 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 oh. I know what I did. I know what I did. I know what I did. Don't tell me. I know what I did. I wasn't paying attention. I want what? I want the scale command. I want the scale tool, which is the R key on my keyboard. Once you get used to this key, so right next, Q, W, E, R, right there, you just kind of tap them. You don't come over here and grab these. Just use your shortcuts. Now, I'm going to scale it holding the shift key. If I don't, it's just going to scale like this, right? Holding the shift key, that, that's, that, let's make it bigger. Let's make it scale like this. Now, hold the shift key. It becomes extrude. You can extrude a shape into that one. Outside or inside? Oh, I want to extrude another shape, okay? All right, let's go to the W key for the move tool. Hold the shift key and just pull it on out. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, let's say I want to slice this a little bit here. I want to add more geometry in here. So we're just going to play with this a little bit, kind of get used to, um, um, you know, navigating things around. I want the four up view so I can see the front, side, and top. Spacebar brings it up. Spacebar. If wherever I put my mouse, that's the view it's going to bring up. So I want the top view, spacebar, top view, spacebar, back to four up. This view, spacebar, now it's that view. Spacebar brings four up back up again. Over the over over perspective, spacebar, and spacebar again. Now, if I hit the A key. It will fit whatever view I have and in, in fit everything into view. If I hold the Shift F, it fits them all into view. Okay. Now, if it's just F, it should fit whichever view I'm in. It'll fit that selected object into view. Okay. All right. Now I want to slice this up a little bit. I'm going to hit Shift F. Let's see, shift F. I want to go back a little bit. Um, oops. Let's bring this back a little bit. There we go. Oops, wrong one. Oops, what's going on with my mouse? Oh, I'm the one I'm happening. There we go. There we are. Let's kind of pull this on back. 
hit the A key, how about Shift A, fits all into view. Now I want to slice up this little this little piece that I just extruded off here. Okay. And if I go up here, I'm, saying, I'm going from memory here. I believe it's under my mesh display or mesh tools. And I've got what's called multi-cut tool. That's the one I usually do. It's a multi-cut tool. What that allows me to do is actually slice, drag and slice. This think think of this think think of this as a lightsaber. If I release it, it slices it. It adds a whole new set of geometry to this. See this here? All right. I want to add another slice in here. Just click and drag. And an oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that one. <laughs> I slice and drag. And oh, that's interesting. I want to get out of this tool anyway. Let's go back to here. There we go. Grab this here. Now, once I have this here, I'm targeting a face here. I can go back to my R command, go to my plane, shift, bring it down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back over here to this view. Space, rotate it. There's my extrusion again. Um, hit the W key for the move tool sh and, and shift key. And pull that on out. All right. So I'm starting to extrude all these little different shapes out of here. If I want a bevel type of a look, oops. If I want a bevel type of a look, I see right on this piece here. Select it and Shift key. I'm gonna hit the R key. Shift key. Planar select. Oops. I grabbed that top one. I thought I was grabbing the, the planer here. I'm going to undo that one. So shift and bring that on in. Now leave it alone. This way, this time we hit the W key, but I'm not even going to hold the shift this time. Just pull it out and there's my bevel. Yeah. Uh, what's the Okay, so the diff so the question is, what is the difference between the multi cut and the insert edge loop tool? All right, let's come over here and see if I have have uh, connected polys. The insert the loop the insert edge loop tool is selecting connected polys. The the multi cut tool is going to slice through anything and everything. <laughs> that's your lightsaber. It's going to slice through anything and everything. Insert edge tool. I think that's under the mesh. Let's see, where was that? Uh, uh, right click. Yeah, I can do that too. I'll do my shift right click. All right. And um, it's going to be right down here. Where is that? Oh. Uh, wait, wait, All right. Oh. Well, there we go. I'm just selecting everything there. Okay. And let's go to my right click. Go to my object mode. Okay. Shift right click. Bottom left. Oh, there we go. Insert edge loop to here. So whatever I select, I click and I click and drag. It selected it. Okay. If I do it again, okay, oops, sorry, I got to go to my object mode here, come on, fumbling around with this, object mode, okay, shift right click, insert edge loop tool, and it's kind of a you're selecting two polys, two two faces that are connected. If I drag it, wait a minute, what have it happened here? There it is. Clicking off the edge, I can move that around. Okay, it's looking it's looking for connected polys, and it's adding a, a loop, an edge loop within there. Right. Where the other tool. Um, Multi-cut 
is, you know, in here it is, it's going to be, I can select between points. I can click and drag. Let's see what am I doing here. And it slices as well. Okay. And now if I come over here, right click, go to faces. Now I've got, oh, I'm going to get out of that tool. Hit the Q key. There we go. And now I can select my faces. So the Q key is going to be your select. Right? It's like any of these faces here. I can, I'll grab that one there. Um, come over here to the resize, which is going to be my R, shift, and then W, shift, pull that on out. Want to play with that? Let's play with that a little bit real quick. So just to reiterate, everybody, just watch me super fast here real quick. Um, we're playing around. I'm still in my end of the mesh tools. I'm still in my multi-cut tool. So multi-cut, like I, like, like I explained, it's kind of like the lightsaber. It will cut through anything. Uh, let me kind of pull this over. Am I? Let's see. Let's, let's select. Let's get out of here. Let's go ahead and hit my. My Q key, let's target a face, right? I only want to actually cut that face. I'm going to hit my F key to fit the selected like face into interview. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my mesh tools, multi cut, and just drag it, and it'll only, so it'll only cut the thing that's selected. So I can drag it. You see it jumping to. to to um to point sometimes because you have the ability to click and drag um to another point click and drag to another point and and, and slice between points or you can click outside well actually it's not gonna allow me to do it is it oh that's interesting I don't know why that is all right so you got those choices Hit the A key. Okay. Um, all right, that was it. I'll let you guys play around a little bit more. Okay, guys. Uh, watch me real quick, please. On the um, on the um, the Google Drive, you have a folder in there called 3D. And what I like you to do is to download this this glass. Okay. I want you to download this glass. In addition, I want you to download the hammer. Why is it why is it denied? Oh, this thing drives me nuts. This hammer? Yeah, I want you, I'm, you have a you have a, you have two files and they're called front and back. They look like the handle of a hammer. You can't see the whole hammer, you're just seeing the ends of the hammer. And it says front and back. No, I'm, I'm still gonna use that. Oh, oh, oh that, you have it on here? Okay, good. Here, go for it. Thank you. All right. So there are. Let me go to, go to the files right here. They look like this. You have this here. It looks like these two handles here. Download those. One says front, and one says back. They're just big images. So download both of those. In addition, download the wine glass. Now I'm getting this message. If I double click this here. I should be able to. There we go. I should be able to download this, but I'm good. Oh, that's interesting. I'm getting denied access here to my own Google Drive. I'm going to go over here and try it through a different you know what I'm gonna try it through Firefox if I remember correctly it worked through Firefox okay let's go to the right Google Drive and let's go to my drive 
and go to my student work files and I upload it in the 3D folder. There we go. All right, so I've got this one, this one, and then the glass. I'm going to do the glass first. Download it. We're going to do the glass on 3D? Yeah, we're going to do the glass on 3D as well. So download the glass as well. Okay. Download. I'm going to show you another modeling style. So far, I was kind of showing you extrusions. Um, now, I'm going to share with you what's called um, lathing or in Maya is called Revolve. And um, let's, uh, I'm gonna embridge, I've got, I put all my, all my images in the folder. In fact, if you have, it's, 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 if you make yourself a, a folder and call it Maya, oh, what, do we, what do we call them, uh, Maya um, content, and then in that folder, make a new folder to give it the name of your of your projects, such as your glass, your hammer. So if you look on my drive here, I'm gonna go to go to my Windows Explorer. On my desktop, I have in here called a uh, Zero Maya Projects right there. I put a zero in front so it pops it up to the very top, makes it easy for me to see and or to track. And then when I open it up. Here are my individual little projects. So under Hammer, I'm going to have additional folders called, one's called Images and one's called Scenes. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a new folder. Um, and I'm going to use the Command Shift N for New Folder. And this one's going to be called, it's going to be called Wine Glass. All right. So inside the Wine Glass folder, I'm going to make an Images folder. I'm going to place all my images in it, and also in addition to the in the root of the of the wine glass folder, I'm going to have a folder called Scenes. That's where I'm going to be saving my my uh, my Maya scene file into there, and all my um all my images is going to go in the images folder. So if I go back to Bridge, Bridge is going to be your main system for viewing everything. I'll go take my glass. I'm going to go to my desktop up here. There's my Maya projects. Drop it down. There's my wine glass and hammer. Open up the wine glass. There's images. Control, click, and drag will, will duplicate and place the wine glass image into the images folder. And if I go over to the hammer and go grab the two hammer files, your front and your side hammer, and holding control or command key, I think in, if you in if you in Mac is option, but on PC it's control. I can drag it into the hammers folder and it'll just duplicate those files into that images. It's already in there, I think. So I'm going to just say, let me cancel just to make sure what's inside there. Yeah, they're already in there. Okay. They're already there. Okay. Maya projects. So let's start with the glass. Go to Maya. And what, uh, what I'm going to create I'm going to just delete this come right over here to the side target my um, let's see where's my my cube hit delete target the other object I had in here the plane I had and hit delete so I like to set up where all my images and, 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 and scenes are going to go to so if I go to the file menu go down toward the bottom I can um, I can set up a, a projects folder here. Okay, so we have recent projects. So it should be projects window. Oops, there we go. Go back up to here. Recent files. Do, 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 set project. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to come over here and say, okay, the projects is under Maya projects. 
that's gonna be my main folder okay um, it's already set to where I want it to go I can drop down here tell it to navigate or come right over here to my desktop and tell it to, you know exactly where I want it to go I've got it it's already set up exactly where I want it to go so I'm gonna go over to Maya projects and that's it there I'm gonna go back actually I want to go back up a little bit desktop zero Maya projects and set it okay we're done okay that's my default workflow okay let's let's go let's bring in the image plane it's very interesting so I'm gonna go back up to my forward view and I'm gonna work with the front view here hit the space bar let's 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 um, you know, fill the screen with the front view now I'm going to create an image plane. Now, what this is going to do is going to create, use that image that I brought in and use it as a reference so that we can create our wine glass. So, under the view menu, I'm going to drop it down and toward the bottom, you have what's called image plane. I'm going to take the image plane, come over to import image, or I can import a movie or a video. We're interested in importing an image. Target import image. Where am I going to go? See, it jumped to the projects folder. And there's my hammer and wine glass. I want the wine glass. Go inside the images folder, double click it. There's my image. Target open. Get to this point. Um, all right, let's start. Um, I'm going to bring in my image plane once again. View menu, image plane, import the image. Okay, wine glass images, and there it is. Now, what image plane is is an actual 3D object. I'm sitting in my front view. Hit my space bar, my four. There's there's my um, perspective view. A key to fit that in the view. It's an actual 3D plane with your photographic image mapped on it. Um, and this is actually kind of nice. So if I go back to my front view, and I want to probably go back to four up view to have, have that available to me. Um, I'm going to go to the front view here, space bar, and hit the A key to fit that in full view. What you're going to do is you're going to use that as a reference to create your wine glass. Now, we're going to use what's called the revolve command in Maya. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we're going to create half of this glass. So if you think about this glass, we cut it sliced in half. I want to actually create the inside of the glass. Did you create the inside of the glass of yours? Yes, we did? Okay. All right. So I'm looking at the edge here. Bring it in close. All right. I'm looking at the edge, and I'm going to basically use my imagination as to if I slice it with, uh, with, with you no, know, with a razor or something. What is the shape of this edge going to be for half of the, uh, for half of the glass here? All right. Now there are going to be some tools we're going to use. We're going to use what's called a spline based tool. Now I'm going to just reference Photoshop on this real quick. Let's close out this file and let's make a new uh, new file. So in Photoshop, we have what's called a Bezier tool or the pen tool, P for the pen tool. And what the pen tool does is it allows you to make shapes. On these shapes, you have handlebars that you can adjust in terms of giving it more slack or taking up the slack or adjusting the angle of your shape. The goal of this is to create highly sophisticated shapes from which you can do artwork or create selections from. Okay, Maya has the same thing. They're called spline tools. And this is basically a spline. So if I go back to Maya 
and hit the A key. I just want to zoom in a little bit because I'm going to need um, to get in close here, make life easier myself here. Um, I'm going to outline the edge of this glass. So if I target my spline tool, see up here at the top, poly modeling is a tab that I'm in now. That's that's the work work room work room I'm in now. If I go over to curves and surfaces right over here, you're gonna have several options, several different styles of curves. The one I prefer you to choose is the one that's like Photoshop. And that's the very last one on the right hand side. And if I target that, now what I'm gonna do, just watch me here and I'm gonna let you guys do it. It's gonna be kind of a little tricky at first. Once you get used to this, you, you'll be able to outline things very quickly. I'm going to put down one little dot. You can see a little dot there. It's kind of probably hard to see in the projector. In fact, is this light turned off in the front? Oh, it doesn't matter. All right. Now I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to look at where the curve begins and where it subsides. It subsides right about here because another curve is going to start right in here. And I'm going to click just on the inside and drag it. See that, that line behind it? I'm tracing the glass in front of me so that the back end falls right into place. I'm going to pull it down here. My curve stops here. It stops here. It's going to have another little curve that goes to here. And click and hold and drag it. Now, you see how hard it is to see my, my spline back there? That's because my glass, my image for the glass is too bright. Hit the A key to fit all in the view. Okay. And if I come over to the, let's see, if I go over to the, um, out of the Bezier, go back to my image plane. The image plane viewing options over here, attributes will, will pop up. Are you guys watching me? You're not watching me. Watch here. So when I click on the image plane here, the attributes show up called image plane shape. Over here, I have an option. I can change the color or I can change what's called the alpha gain. Alpha is transparency. So if I grab that slider and bring it over, see it's going transparent. You see now I can see the spline? That helps. Now I can go back to the Bezier spline and go ahead and zoom in closer again. In fact, I'm going to delete it just so I can start fresh and so you can make it easier to see. Here, click and drag. See, I'm, I'm tracing the shape in front of me so the back end falls in line. And I'm going to go click and drag here, tracing the shape in front of me. The back end falls right in line. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm tracing the inside of the glass. Come up to here to the edge. Tap and release, and it pretty much falls in place. Let's get in a little closer. Let's see, click this here. There we go. All right. We're going to create this lip, put a point there, and drag it, and that's going to be my lip. Okay. Bring it down. I'm going to bring it back too. Zoom back a little bit. I'm going to go to the outside, give it a little bit of a curve. Okay, bring this back to here. Another little curve. Again, we're staying on the outside. Trace the shape in front of me. See how I'm creating the outside outline of that glass? Click and release and drag here. Just slightly. Okay, bring this on over. Click and drag. Trace the shape in front of you so that out the back line just falls right in place with the outline of the glass. Drag it to here. Now let's go get the bottom. There's my stem. 
curve starts here, ends right about there. Click and drag, trace the shape in front of you, it'll fall right in the line. Now the bottom isn't going to be perfect because we're not really seeing the complete side of the glass, right? Now I'm going to target it right there. Okay. Um, let's get the A key. This is going to be my shape I'm going to create. Hit the space bar. Let's save this one. File. Save as. It's going to save it back to that, that folder. Now, what I should have done was say was was tell it that my um, my main folder is going to be the wine glass since that's the one I'm going to be working in. I still I, I assume I can still go go change it. So if I come back to my file menu and go down to set project, I can come back to my desktop Maya projects wine glass. I just want to go back the wine glass itself and then set that as the projects folder. Say nope, um, create default works. Uh, set another and create default to workspace. Yeah, that that'll be fine. Um, so if I go save this, let's see, I should be able to save scene as. Oh, I still going by the same one. It didn't change it. Strange. Why? Ah, that's right. That's right. I'll oh, forget it. It's not important anyway right now. Um, <laughs> um, there's my my spline. Let's just go in here to the and, and, and go ahead and bring this view up here. Okay, there's my spline on the 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 z axis zero 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 z axis. It's flat on the plane. Okay. And if I remember going from memory here, I can go over here to my surfaces so you know where things are in the menu. And we have something called revolve. Now, actually, why don't you guys get to this point first? So remember, you're gonna you're gonna begin here in the middle of the glass at the base of the glass, come up and around to the bottom, and then end on the um, the center of your glass. So get get to this F9. Okay, we're recording. So now we have the glass, have it outlined. The points are falling on the the the, um, the zero axis, the y zero x for y. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the surfaces. I'm going to access the revolve command, the third tool down. But you're going to click this little box here. If we click the box. Ooh, the box isn't showing up because of the resolution of my screen. So what I'm going to have to do is show you <laughs> the main computer. But what's going to happen is, actually, if I come over to here, maybe I can do it this way. Um, let's go over to Surfaces and just click the Revolve command. Yeah, I need, I need the box there. Um, target it. Let me just make sure that's the case. Uh, surfaces, revolve. There it is. Got it. It did it. All right. Um, what the there's a there's an info box that pops up. I'm gonna show you on one of your computers. This did it for me. It revolved the shape. You see that? Okay. It does. This is inverted. Oh gosh, I'm forgetting it. Um, uh, the inverts under the surfaces. Mesh display. That's it. Okay, and uh, should be right in here. Reverse. So reverse. Hmm. Let's click the subject. Click the. I know exactly what I just figured out. Okay. All right. Okay. So mesh display, reverse. I want to make sure this reverse. It's called, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. 
Very interesting. Normally it does it. Um, give me a second. I'll have this figured out in just a minute. Under display, show, show, culling. Let's see. I'm going, let's see. Heads up display, show, show geometry. Give me a second. Shade deformers, clusters, kinetic geometry, culling surfaces. What is it? That's under mesh. No, that's smooth. Windows. All right, I'll check in a little bit. I'm forgetting. There's, a, there's, there's an attribute to show the inner and outer face, and I'm forgetting where it, where it is. All right, so I'm going to show you on your computer where to access. When you, when you go, to your, go to your surfaces, go to Revolve, and then click on that little box on the side. Click on that box. And it's going to give you an options coming up. Okay, homework assignment is due next week. So it is it, it's, it's okay, guys. I'm I'm gonna show you again. Watch me here. It's due next week, the twentieth, right? So watch me up here. So the videos is inside that Google Drive folder I gave you. Remember that that URL I gave you? This is the folder you're accessing. It's right there. Assignment number one. It shows it to you. All your assignments are gonna go in here. All your assignments are going to go in here. So go to go over here to share it with me. Click on the share it with me. You will see it. Look look at your screen. Look at your screen. It's there. Yeah. yeah. Double click. Well, that that that's the student images folder. Go back to the other one. There it is. Let's click double click on assignment number one. That's it. Okay. All right, cool. All right, that's it, everybody. We'll see you.